Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is what we're talking about a few reasons why Toys R Us has failed. Why it went bankrupt. Why we no longer have this iconic store that we grew up with. Or at least most of us have. So to begin with, the company's debts were basically too much to bear. Now I got this article from USA Today for this point. I'm going to pull from a, different, a few different sites to talk about. Um... Back in 2005, they went private, and that's when they amassed the debt about $5 billion. So it's $5 billion in liabilities. Now, I believe they could have easily taken care of that if they had redirected it. Instead of doing the same, it felt like they were doing the same thing they had always done and expecting it to work. That's just not how it is. I feel like they, they need to take a lesson from, um, they should look at Amazon, really. <laughs> They just looked at Amazon and went, okay, this is working. Let's try it similar to this. And, you know, we'll go off of that. But it literally became like a metaphorical ankle anchor around the mascot, Jeffrey the Giraffe's Neck. Fun fact, I didn't know that was the, the giraffe's name, Jeffrey. I literally just thought it was a giraffe. I didn't pay much attention. Now, with the same article, it says it was terrible timing, and I have to agree with this wholeheartedly. Now, we'll never know the real the reason why it happened when it did, but they filed for bankruptcy in September, just before holidays, you know, mainly Christmas. Uh, why? Who knows? Because you, I know Christmas was the only time I ever stepped foot into a Toys R Us, right? I feel that was for a, a lot of people. That they only went towards the rest for Christmas. So why they did it in September? Yeah, again, we won't know. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. But yeah, man, that just the more I think about it, the more that, the less sense it makes. Um, and then again, third point is that the competitors turn up the heat, and that's absolutely true. When you see the things Amazon is doing. Within the past few, we'll say five years, the convenience of using Amazon is just ridiculous. I mean, I can order something on um, Prime now, I get it in a few hours. The reality is, I don't have to step foot on my house for even groceries. And there's many different places for that, but Amazon's my go to. And then they have the one click buy, they have same day shipping, two day shipping. Um, Quite honestly, you get premium products for non-premium prices. Again, with a competitor like Amazon, you really have to step your game up. There's just no way around it. Or, shot in the dark, maybe Toys R Us just got lackadaisical. They got used to being a retail giant. And they deserved it, to be called that. They earned it. They've been around for over 70 years. But at the same time, if they got comfortable and quit trying to adapt to what is working now, it's a pretty good chance that you were going to fail if you weren't adapting to the situations at hand. But I digress. Let's see. Ah. Another good point right here. So the vendors got skittish. So in 2005, when they got that five billion dollars in debt it translated into apparently the vendors who were supplying Toys R Us you know with all the merchandise they were worried whether to get payment or not and for good reason I mean five billion dollars is not a a number to laugh at at all by any means no matter how big your company is there's just no way around it so scaring off so a few points Let's recap a little bit. Uh, when they went private, they massed a lot of debt. They really haven't adapted to the the e-commerce area, the online convenience that a lot of stores have. Even Walmart's doing it, right? And they really didn't do it until they started noticing Amazon starting to catch up on them, right? So with that being said, I mean... There's almost no way that Toys R Us was not going to fail. 
Now I'm hopping onto a different article here. This one is from capitalism.com. And again, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the links for these articles in the description. If y'all want to read them yourselves, cool deal. But just here, here I was saying earlier, it, it, they failed to embrace the age of e-commerce, and they weren't really in the community either. So not only were they not making an online presence, and now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever seen a Facebook ad, a uh, YouTube ad. That's really the only two, only two things I'm on. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it out either of those. And that's, no, that's a bit shocking to me. You would think with as big as they were, that that wouldn't be a problem. They would at least, hmm. Anyways, back to it. Um, little quote from Mark Zuckerberg. It says, in our generation, the struggle of whether we connect more, whether we achieve our biggest opportunities, comes down to this. Your ability to build communities. And I've lost my place. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And create a world where every single person has a sense of purpose. And I believe that Toys R Us missed its single biggest opportunity when it allowed its employees to abandon their purpose years ago. Now, I'm not quite sure what the police that do with that. Maybe there's a bigger picture that I'm not seeing. But I, um, all I know is I haven't really seen anything from Toys R Us in the past couple of years, except for commercials here and there on TV. Which, by the way, I look at prices just for local TV stations are 200 to fifteen hundred dollars per thirty seconds. That is freaking nuts, right? You you can do a video ad on YouTube, pay per click, for way cheaper and get better conversions. I mean, I'm gonna do another video on that. The 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 um, pros and cons of traditional television versus a uh, YouTube ad. I like that idea. Anyways, uh, let's get into it. And it talks about building communities, being transparent, accountable, accessible. Again, accessible, I believe they're pointing out to the uh, the e-commerce side of it online. Uh, similar to Amazon's, you know, one-click buy or their two-day shipping. And again, things extremely efficient and fast and having quality products on top of an amazing customer service center. I've had to call them a few times, and they are just freaking wonderful, man. Yeah, they're awesome when it comes to handling, you know, the issues you may be having. And, ah, I like this one. This one's talking about uh, building brand trust and loyalty. And they use the example of Lululemon. Now, if you don't know Lululemon, it's a, uh, basically a yoga shop. You get yoga pants, yoga mats. Yeah. I'm really big on that. I don't know too much about them. But I do know they're awesome at getting the community involved. Now, it shows an example here. They had a community event uh, for the, the chance to try on the new Lululemon apparel. And you would be in a treadmill truck where you had a virtual run through New York City. And these people would walk away with $150 worth of new workout attire as a promotional gift. $150. Now, of course, a company like that, $150 bucks, might not be such a big deal. But more importantly, what that did was almost obligate those people to come back to them, right? It, I know if I went there and John just gave me $150 worth of shit. If I went to uh, Cabela's and they had a promotional stuff and they gave me $150 worth of uh, camping equipment, I'm going back to them. I mean, like I said, I'm almost obligated to. So again... Toilers wasn't doing nothing like this. Part of the reason why they failed. And I haven't seen a ad for Lululemon either. But my girlfriend likes that shit. Or my wife likes that shit. I don't understand it. <laughs> but because they were hosting and sponsoring these public events, it built up trust within their community. So, like I said, it, it made these people want to go to Lululemon. They felt a part of their group. And you only buy from people that you know. Simple as that. Don't know you, 
They're not gonna buy from you. But yeah, that's really about it for those articles. Um, I've already plugged my takeaways in this on there, or so what I thought, anyways. My own opinions on it. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of you know, it's sad to see something that I grew up with go away. But again, times change constantly. You can look out there today and see things that are constantly changing. I, there's an area over by my old high school used to be all in. Guess what's being developed? And it, more and more places are getting like that. You know, we're we're in that stage in life where everything is being is being built up. So these companies don't change along with it. They're going to fall into obscurity. And if you fall into obscurity you're not going to win at business. It's just as simple as that. But with that being said, it's sad to see Toys R Us go. But hey, it's the way of the world. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.